all right um so before the break we were talking about the church being a place where god's presence dwells uh, and we and i talked about the tabernacle which was made in the pattern of uh, heaven and heaven's worship uh, and we said that god's presence came upon the ark of the covenant uh, and that's what made the tabernacle special because god would come to visit his people god would come to meet and um, communicate with his people and it was really the presence of god which sanctified the tabernacle so the uh, presence of god you know we also kind of use the term the glory of god so the glory of god would would come into the tabernacle and that is what would uh, be visible from time to time and that is what uh, sanctified the tabernacle so uh, today as god's people and his house that's what we must expect our churches to be uh, a place where god's glory dwells a place where god will come and meet with his people and minister to his people um so we have seen the glory of god in the tabernacle that moses built uh, but uh, as soon as the the children of israel settled down uh, uh, you know in the place that god showed them uh, solomon was was the person who built a temple for god so it was no longer a moving tabernacle but he built the temple of god and when solomon built the temple in second chronicles chapter 5 we read about the dedication of the temple you know the priests came in uh, and uh, you know uh, the people came in they worshiped god uh, there was music right there was uh, ex- exaltation of god and when that happened uh, uh, in uh, chapter 5 of second chronicles was 14 we see that god's glory was manifested and how was god's glory manifested so the uh, the the presence of god came down as a cloud in verse 14 it came down as a cloud uh, and it was so um you know real uh, it it was so tangible that people could not even stand in that presence so god's glory was manifested as a cloud in the temple of god okay so god has always revealed his heart uh, of wanting to fill his house with his glory so the tabernacle carried the glory of god the glory sanctified uh, the tabernacle the temple that solomon built also hosted the glory of god or the presence of god uh, and uh, you know god uh, uh, was was pleased to do that so let's continue you know with with that same thought okay so wherever there there is a house for god god's glory comes in so god is always interested in filling his house with glory now we know that solomon's temple was destroyed by the babylonians and at the end of the 70 year captivity you know you have the jewish people going back to rebuild the temple and uh, that rebuilding of the temple it is interrupted uh, for various reasons uh, and, and it's a challenging time so god sends prophets to speak his heart to the people to encourage them so the prophet haggai he prophesies uh, about the rebuilding of the temple and haggai chapter 2 verses 7 through 9 i think i'll request someone to read it please anyone it's in, a, in our notes here um, on page number 99 Page ninety nine, Haggai two, verses seven through nine. Could somebody read it, please? Can read it. Ah, yes, please. And I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. the silver is mine and the gold is mine says the lord of hosts the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former says the lord of hosts and in this place i will give peace says the lord of hosts thank you thank you thank you kennedy uh, for reading that passage so again you know you we, we very clearly see god's intention and what he wants to do for the rebuilding of the temple here's the word that god gives he says i will fill this temple with glory so where there is a temple that pleases god 
what does god intend to do tabernacle he gave his glory solomon's temple he gave his glory rebuilding of the bro, uh, the the ruined temple right uh, uh, by the jews who returned what is he promising he saying i will fill this temple with glory so where there's a temple we see god's intention he wants to fill it with glory so that's what he wants to do all the time okay uh, so let's keep that in our in our hearts now because we are talking about glory glory what is glory glory is nothing but uh, you know who god is okay and what he does and because of who he is he is able to do certain things and and he does that in our midst and that's what we are referring to as glory god's glory uh, when uh, who god is you know his magnificence uh, his splendor uh, we we sense that you know as as his presence manifests we sense it and and you know we are in a in a place of reverence we are in a place of awe that is who god is that is who he is he is great you know the the heavens are his throne the earth is his footstool he is that sovereign god so we we when we sense who he is uh that's his glory you know manifested right there so god is uh, when we study about the nature of god and who he is uh there is so much to the nature of god so it's not just one thing but there is so much to the person of god and the manifestation of who he is is the revelation of his glory so his invisible attributes right are expressed and that is what is the glory of god and his uh, uh glory is manifested in innumerable ways okay in innumerable ways uh, when we look at the tabernacle of moses people saw uh, a cloud come down right they could see the cloud come down uh, it, it it was a sight of great great fear uh, when when people noticed know how god's presence came and took over the tabernacle uh, and, and when we study about the temple that solomon built again the the glory cloud came as the people worshiped uh, and they wanted to dedicate the temple so how did it manifest the presence of god manifest as a cloud but is that all is that the only way in which god manifests himself no but when we study about the glory of god and the manifestations of god's glory there are many many expressions you know we we uh, see that our god is a consuming fire right so there can be a manifestation of, of uh, you know the presence in the form of heat or uh, he is the prince of peace so there might be a sense of peace that we experience right but all of this is god manifesting himself his presence his glory in our midst and so uh, for the natural mind right uh, these things don't make sense but because we understand you know from god's word who he is what he what he is all about and what he brings to us what he imparts in us we can recognize oh okay uh, i'm experiencing god's majesty i'm experiencing god's peace sometimes i think we can't even put words to it and say what we are experiencing but we are experiencing god and so the glory of god is who god is and what he does in our midst and we just have to be receptive to that you know, whatever god is doing and in today's time you know uh, uh, have we all seen clouds descending as we worship god in our church services not necessarily okay maybe it, it could have happened uh, uh, for for some of us but normally that doesn't happen but we know that the manifestation of the spirit Okay, that that can happen through the gifts of the spirit. So, how does God manifest His glory? Maybe a prophetic word that is released as we are worshiping. You know, as as the leader, whoever is leading the service, they they pray over the people. Some prophetic words that are released through that prayer, a dec uh, declaration or a decree which is released. But that word, because it's coming from God, it carries the power of God. okay and that power of god will manifest the presence of god it will manifest the person of god uh, in in the lives of the people so how do we experience god's glory maybe we didn't feel anything maybe we didn't you know uh, sense 
some heat or cold or you know sometimes uh, people say i can feel some vibration this and that maybe we didn't feel any of that but his glory could have been manifest through a song it could have been made manifest through uh, you know a spoken word things like that in any which way right god is able to manifest his glory uh, and uh, uh, you know the supernatural takes place so us as believers you know, this is what we are looking for we are we are saying okay god we've come together and we are your temple but what what is a temple without the habitation of god what is a temple without the manifestation of the glory of god so this is what we are after okay and uh, the truth is that we can have varying levels of manifestation we can just say uh, okay god your glory we know about it we want it we have it to an extent and that's great you know that's about it finished over or we can keep going deeper right into the presence of god into the levels of god's glory and the manifestation of his glory uh, and and see so much more of his glory revealed in our midst or you know excuse me it's possible okay the the sad part is it's possible to have no glory at all so there are very varying levels of glory at the same time no glory okay uh, and uh, uh, it's very unfortunate for a body of believers to keep going through the motions and not have the glory manifested so we've understood a little bit about god's glory you know god's glory we can study it thoroughly there are various uh, you know aspects to it that that we must consider so one thing we we saw is that god wants to fill the temple with his glory but we also see in scripture that god has created human beings to manifest his glory or his nature to be made manifest through us when he created adam and eve you know there was a certain glory that he gave them okay to live through that but uh, we know that that was taken away uh, and you know people went on living their lives with sin uh, and later even as moses led the people through egypt you know, there's a time when they sin uh, and uh, moses pleads with god for forgiveness and all of that in numbers 14 verses 20 and 21 again this passage is in our notes uh, page number 100 i would request somebody to read it please numbers 14 verses 20 and 21 anyone numbers 14 20 yes, and 21 i'll read yeah yeah yes sabni please go ahead thank you numbers 14 verse 20 and 21 says then the lord said i have pardoned according to your word but truly as i live all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the lord amen yes thank you thank you avni so again you know uh you see that god is not wanting to restrict his glory he has forgiven the people after uh moses uh, pleaded with him and what is he saying see this is god's heart the temple must be filled with his glory but he adds here and he says but truly as i live all the earth shall be filled with the glory of god so uh, god's intention in creating man is to fill the earth with his glory that's what he wanted he wanted his wanted his nature okay the person he is to be expressed everywhere in the world everywhere on earth okay and he wanted man to do this he wanted people to manifest his glory as they as people walk in the purposes of god you know as people walk in agreement to the will of god what will happen we will start manifesting the glory of god so that's what god wants you know god wants his glory to be in the temple but he also wants his glory to cover the earth every place in this world must experience who he is and what he is able to do now uh, just coming back to the glory of god and how um, hosting 
the glory of God really blesses the community of God's people. You know, we look at that. Um, so here in the next section, we have a passage from Psalm 132 verses 13 through 18, where, you know, the psalmist writes about what God will do where he is present. So in this passage, uh, I'll go verse by verse. So uh, uh, he says, for the Lord has chosen Zion. Okay, Zion is a, mm, uh, like we use the term Zion, uh, Though it's a place and God's chosen people are called Zion, we as the church can call ourselves the spiritual Zion. Okay, so we are uh, God's spiritual Zion. So I have chosen Zion. We can take this in our context. So God has chosen the church. He has desired it for his dwelling place. So he has desired his people to be his dwelling place. That we understand. He wants to live among his people. So when he comes to live among his people, what does he do? Verse 14, this is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell for I have desired it. So uh, it shows us that God uh, is pleased to dwell with his people. It's not a matter of compulsion where we have to beg and plead and, uh, you know, uh, uh, convince, persuade God, please come, please be with us. Instead, we see that he desires, okay, and he is very excited about dwelling with his people. So he desires to make uh, his people his resting place. Verse 15, when God comes and dwells in our midst, he says, I will abundantly bless her provision. So what can we expect? When God dwells in our midst, okay, who he is will come through. So he has already promised in his covenant names and said that I am Jehovah Jireh, right? Jehovah Jireh means the Lord who provides. He provides. He has a covenant of provision with us. So when we host the glory of God as a body of believers, what can we expect? We can expect the blessings that come with it. We will have an abundance of provision. And God is promising that we will be blessed with provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread again in the area of provision. Uh, but here, what God adds is He says that no one will lack. Okay, it's like the way He led the children of Israel through the wilderness period. They did not have access to resources, but that was not a limitation because they had God. And what could God do? God could provide in the period of lack. God could provide in the famine. God could still bless okay, with uh, uh, daily requirements, with, with whatever the needs of the people were. God was able to uh, give them that. So when we host God's presence and we host his glory, what can we expect? God is simply saying, I will be Jehovah Jireh. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There will be nobody among you in need. God will miraculously you know, begin to provide uh, even the poor. He says, I will satisfy with bread. So we can experience God's blessings in provision. Verse 16, it says, I will also clothe her priests with salvation and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. So the uh, the outcome of salvation when we study about what salvation really means uh, sozo that greek word sozo means our saving it means our rescue it means our protection right uh, it, it means our bless uh, i mean it means our blessing so many other things that come with uh, the salvation of god so god is saying that you know all that will be seen in our lives his blessings, his protection, and even uh, salvation has to do with our eternal rescue, most of all. So that will be seen in the lives of the people. And uh, the community of believers will be rejoicing in God because we see that the saints shall shout aloud for joy. So you know, these are the promises that God makes, uh, uh, you know, with regard to his presence coming in dwelling in our midst and us hosting his glory. Verse 17, he says, 
there i will make the horn of david grow so the horn um, uh, usually refers to strength when one is lacking in strength you can't accomplish uh, great things but god is saying when i am with you when i come to dwell in your midst even if you are lacking in strength so the horn there so he says i will make the horn of david grow or i will increase your strength i will increase your ability so god is able to do that for his people and the believers then i will prepare a lamp for my anointed so you know lamp for my anointed is uh, it's again you know the uh, glory being revealed a uh, revelation right a revelation of god uh, uh, being given to god's people and so on and so forth so uh, god's revelation will be there uh, god's leading will be there and god will do that for us and then he also adds verse 18 his enemies are clothed with shame so that's a, a, a statement of victory and we know that through christ jesus he always leads us in triumphant victory anyway but uh, even in the old covenant right the psalmist has put down what god is able to and god is willing to do for his people when his people uh, a host his presence when they become the temple of god so we will have victory and in other words it says here enemies i will clothe with shame but upon himself his crown shall flourish or you know god is beautifying us uh, we we see this in isaiah he talks about how he will shine on us how he will give beauty for our ashes this morning i think in the supernatural hour somebody gave that word oaks of righteousness so god is a uh, a god who can restore back to beauty okay and that's the the kind of god we serve so god is encouraging his people uh, here zion his people he says i have chosen you i will dwell in your midst and when i dwell in your midst you know who i am will begin to manifest and that is provision protection victory uh, revelation you know just the entire uh, list of of whatever god is you know he will bring a strength right salvation so many things that he will make happen in our midst so in other words god's glory will be seen on us isaiah uh, 60 talks about that it says arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people the lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you so when we become the temple god's glory what what do we start re- what do we start um uh, reflecting what do we start you know shining the glory of god god's people god's house will start shining the glory of god and that's how it's supposed to be okay uh, uh, i see that charles has a question so we'll we'll take that uh, charles you want to say something uh, yes pastor um i am looking at the seven i will the promises from the scripture that we are sharing mm-hmm. and when you are talking you are like yeah. think that what i am will be manifest to you that i will i will mm. and i was thinking about the seven mm. i ams mm. or in the book of john <laughs> mm. if i am the bread of life mm. i'm this i am i'm the i'm the way the truth and the life i'm the resurrection i'm i'm this i'm this i'm this would would they now i'm looking at them and i'm trying to see whether they would connect with these seven i am seven i wills in this scripture just it, it came in my mind as you talked thank you yep thank you thank you uh, charles uh, that's an interesting project so will you take it up to connect and let see whether let me take whether... it up let me take it up <laughs> yeah okay yeah maybe you can just do a, you know just list it out and, and see the i wills and i ams and see whether there's you know some overlapping there yeah but thank you for for sharing i, I never thought about it uh, but that's true and also i missed uh, in my excitement i didn't mention the um 
you know the words i will so in psalm 132 uh, again it it's it's god being very definite and certain so he says i will you know make these things happen you know bless our provision satisfy um the poor with with bread so i will so god is not confused about that uh, he is sure that he is going to do all these things when we let him dwell with us so that is uh, what god wants to do he wants so ultimately you know if there's one key thing that we are taking away today uh, that is god wants to reveal his goodness okay god wants to reveal his 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 beauty god wants to reveal uh all of who he is you know his faithfulness his um, kindness his mercy uh his justice his everything so everything that he is he wants to give he wants to show he wants to demonstrate uh, uh and uh, you know in the lives and we've seen here that he he is particular about doing it among his people so in the tabernacle in the temple in the rebuilt temple and he's also saying that it's not just restricted to to the temple but we have been created in the image of god so he wants the earth to be filled with his glory and that is the heart of god okay and uh, uh so can we expect good things great things from god um you know in our in our personal walk with god and uh, when we come together as a body of believers certainly because that's what god wants you know he delights he desires to manifest his glory and his glory is who he is and what he does and he only does good right for his people and and that is just such a uh encouraging uplifting comforting thought right there uh now let's look at the life of jesus you know jesus also manifested the glory of god how did jesus manifest god's glory uh when um jesus is being talked about you know john writes he says that he was full of grace and truth so jesus is revealing the nature of god what is the nature of god filled with grace filled with truth is that a manifestation of his glory yes okay it is a manifestation of his glory just by the person that the lord jesus um is he manifested god's glory and we also know that you know he carried what is known as the sonship glory here on the earth because jesus uh, you know uh, he is the son of god and uh, his um about his dwelling place was heaven before he came to um live here uh, among mankind so we, we know you know there are other passages like uh, philippians 2 where we read that he left behind his heavenly glory and he came to the earth so there is a different glory which he carried in heaven okay or the manifestation of who he is you know that manifestation was different up in heaven but we know that he set aside that heavenly glory and he came to the earth and yet god gave him another glory here on the face of the earth and we refer to that glory um as the sonship glory john 1 verse 14 says and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory now this glory is not the you know the the pompous uh, glory of heaven no but we beheld or we saw we intently saw a certain glory which this word became flesh carried the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so there was manifestation of a certain glory on the earth here and that is what we are referring as the sonship glory Okay, so he carried that, and it was evident uh, in the grace and truth that he he um, uh, embodied. Moving further, when we read about the way Jesus started doing the works of the Father, so the first time where we read about the the manifestation of his glory is when he turned the water into wine. So John chapter two verse eleven, when he did a miracle. Okay, uh, the Bible says, or John said. this beginning of signs jesus did in cana of galilee and manifested his glory 
and his disciples believed in him so the works of the father and particularly here we see signs miracles that's a manifestation of the glory of god so that is how jesus manifested the glory there are other passages where you know jesus engaged in in uh, healing so matthew 15 verse 31 says so the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking the maimed made whole the lame walking and the blind seeing and they glorified the god of israel so so they could connect they could connect what jesus is doing it 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 sits well with the nature of the god they knew and so they glorified the god of israel and said oh okay here is a man he is manifesting the glory of god how is he manifesting the supernatural signs healings you know, we we noted all these healings that took place miracles that took place in people's lives so in this way you know he manifested the glory of god and today you know we are uh god's representatives on the earth and have to walk the way he did uh, and we too can you know manifest that sonship glory that um god has given okay. right so hmm, yeah how do we manifest the glory i think we've we've discussed that uh we can allow the spirit of god to work uh, in and through our lives um when we release a prophetic word or similar to the way jesus did the works of the father you know healings took place miracles took place so when these things happen through our lives again you know the the uh, glory of god is manifested so we can carry and we can manifest the glory of god okay so the next section here uh, talks about um, a very um sad uh, time when the the glory of god departed okay from the people of god and this is um, in the book of samuel when eli the priest uh, he his sons lived an immoral life and uh, they were not uh keeping the commands of god so at that point you know we we see that uh his daughter in law um she gives birth and she names the child ikabod okay and ikabod that term really means the glory has departed from israel so because of a life of disobedience because of um a life of uh, immorality you know it's very sad when you start reading uh, the book of samuel uh, it says the word of the lord was very rare so there was hardly any manifestation of the person of god so ikabod is that the presence of god has departed the glory of god has departed and uh, it was the the lifestyle and the hearts of the people that caused the glory of god to um uh, sort of go away from where he really wanted to dwell you know we've seen that that god really wanted to dwell uh, among his people but um, they did not let god dwell in their midst so god uh, is is sort of warning us all these all these incidents in scripture uh, are telling us that god really wants to dwell in our midst he wants to see um, the manifestation of his person in different ways but we can be people who stop limit you know restrict um his glory from being manifest so what did we see in the case of eli disobedience immorality similarly uh, at a time when um, you know ezekiel was prophesying he also uh, talks about how god says that you know i'm not going to enter i'm not come into i'm not going to come into the temple because can you imagine you know god wanting to be outside the temple that is because of the disobedience and the wrong attitudes of people so we do not want that to happen god must definitely dwell in his temple and 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 that is his intention okay uh even looking ahead at the future you know we uh, see that there will be a millennial temple 
right? Ezekiel 43, he prophesied and said that there's going to be a temple and he describes that glorious temple, how, um, you know, where it will be, or what direction it will face and a river will go out of the temple and this and that. But, you know, that temple also, as you read the description of that temple, we understand that God is going to fill that temple. And the glory of the Lord, you know, came into the temple. So God uh, wants to dwell in that temple and he wants to continue blessing um, uh, the, the people. He wants to continue blessing the world. So that is God's heart for us. And we've been saying all along that we as God's people, um, as a body of believers, we are the temple of God. So uh, we apply all this to ourselves that God wants to dwell in our midst. When he comes to dwell in our midst, all the I will blessings that we saw, you know, that uh, we will experience those. Uh, and we must also be careful and cautious because we, we said that you know, there were times when the glory departed. There was a time when God did not want to come to the temple. Okay, he stood outside the temple. So we don't we don't want um, uh, that to be God's equation with us. So as God's people, you know, and with the coming of Jesus, in fact, you know, God's desire to be with us is made even more clear. There are passages, Matthew 18, 20, where we see, it simply says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there in their midst. So, you know, God is not making it difficult at all for us to experience his presence. But we must be wanting, right? We must uh, be desiring that uh, in, in that same uh, intensity and passion for us to have God in our midst. So God is present. Even if two or three are gathered in the name of, of uh, uh, the Lord, he is present. And Paul, talking to the Corinthian church, he said this, 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 4, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. So when people are gathered together, right, God's spirit and his power is made manifest. And, you know, God desires to do that for us. So as a household of God, let's continue to seek him um, and let's continue to trust that, you know, God will fill uh, our communities with his glory. Now, this is nothing new because the first century church had this experience we talked about Jesus and we said he manifested his glory through the nature, you know, grace, truth, and then later on through signs, healings, miracles. So take the same things and look for it in the early church. No, it was there. They were walking with boldness. They were walking with uh, unity. They were walking uh, in love for one another. So the nature of God is being manifest. There's truth, right? So wherever uh, there is untruth, you see, um, you know, God uh, showing himself very strong on behalf of his people. Uh, and there's also judgment that, that we see in the first century church. Uh, we see that um, apostles and not just apostles. If, if you take, for example, uh, a believer, a volunteer like Stephen. Okay, we are told about Stephen that he was a man full of faith and power did wonders and signs among the people. So individuals are manifesting the glory. You have leaders manifesting, apostles, obviously, you know, they gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Scriptures tell us that you had volunteers who were manifesting the glory of God. You had normal believers who were manifesting the glory of God, moving in signs, wonders, and miracles. So great power and great grace was seen upon the first century church. And that hasn't stopped. So we can expect the same thing in our midst. And of course, while Paul exhorts the body of believers whom he had uh, nurtured in the Lord while writing to the Corinthian church, you know, he tells them that you are the temple of God. Don't you know God dwells in your midst? So don't defile yourself. He warns them against sin. He warns them against you know things that will... Uh, um, corrupt, pollute, right, the holiness uh, of the body of believers. So we must be careful. So what are the things that will keep God away from us? Yeah, sin, the, being um, disobedient, having the wrong heart attitudes, 
right so all these things will keep god away from us instead we can pursue god's presence and holiness because holiness is important if there is no holiness then we cannot have god dwelling in our midst then and that's what we see in scripture he comes uh, where um you know he he is celebrated with holiness okay and the result of him coming also is that his glory sanctifies the temple so that adds to the work of holiness that he will do in us and uh, as god's people you know we must seek out for that so some of the practical things here that uh, we need to look at is again like all the other um, all the other uh, topics how will people know that they are the temple the understanding of being a temple needs to be taught to the people so when we teach that yeah hey this is what god says uh, we are the temple of god and his spirit dwells in us then you know individually corporately people can align themselves to that word and uh, start living that out okay and uh, the next practical thing is we must uh, expect god to dwell in our midst and when we expect god to dwell in our midst you know all the blessings the results of god being in our midst you know we must expect that and uh, god is able to make that happen and equip every believer to manifest the glory you know we talked so much about the supernatural now for a lot of believers um, once we accept christ maybe we don't have an idea of of what this glory is what the manifestation of this glory is uh, but you know we build people up by the spirit so we teach them god's word we teach them uh, you know we equip them uh, as a disciple and also as a minister of god how do you manifest the the um uh, manifest the gifts of the spirit and so on and so forth right so yeah these are some practical aspects uh and yeah i think that should be that should be some of the key things that uh, uh, we should address uh, yes mangi you have something to say please go ahead thank you pastor uh, i have a question um i think it's also i think just the confusion going to my head uh regarding the temple and the glory of god you mentioned earlier on that when christ comes back in the uh, to reign on earth for thousand years there will be a temple so the question i have is we the new creation the new the church is now um uh, christ temple he he lives in us when he comes back why why does he have to build a temple that's question one uh and sec second question is so if he is here with us and he is god why do we still need to to have a temple since we can the temples was was a uh, a replica of what was in heaven and now the god himself who, who god of all glory jesus himself comes down and then is the king on earth why do, do we still have to to go to the temple to to worship him thank you first yeah thank you mangi i am not sure if i know um, uh, the answer but i can tell you what uh, as much as i know so see the the pattern of worship right which is established in in heaven for some reason you know we've seen god do this earlier also so the millennial temple is nothing new the tabernacle of moses a uh, solomon's temple the you know the rebuilt temple and then now us you know uh, emmanuel god with us so god became man dwelt uh, among us that happened and then once uh, you know jesus uh, finished the work on the cross we have the spirit dwelling in us okay so we are we are regenerated by the work of the spirit and we have the indwelling presence of the holy spirit in us so uh, 
yes even right now you know you could ask the question why only millennial temple even now you can ask the question while the holy spirit is dwelling inside within us what is the need for us to come together as a church and god's presence to dwell there as if you know that's a temple but uh the i mean i don't know why answer i don't know but that is the pattern we've seen god use all along so now the church is that spiritual temple that hosts the presence and the glory of god and the pattern will continue mangi so that's as much as i can tell you why i honestly don't know the answer to that okay uh, and you asked me another uh, uh, question there was another question in there i missed it okay uh, it was similar it's a god himself jesus will come right mm. and he will be the ruler of will come he will come on on, on the earth mm -hmm. so my question is why do you still have need a, a temple since the temple was the was hosting his glory when he was not on on, on the earth now he is present on the earth why can we, can we are we not just going to worship him and secondly uh when he, he died the bible tells us that he took his blood into the heavenly temple to cleanse all the vessels once for all. So that's why I'm, I'm, I still don't understand why we need the temple. Mm. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure, Mangi. Uh, one thing that I can think of is, see, even right now, the worship that goes on in heaven, it's continuous because God is that worthy. Okay. And uh, I don't think we can ever overdo worship. So why the temple? Because he is worthy of worship. So whether you know the worship happens there, what, what, let worship happen everywhere. Let worship happen all the time, uh, and, and that's the only thing that I can think of, Mangi. I don't have any any additional point to that. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Rose, for uh, giving us that reference of the New Jerusalem. Revelation 21 and verse 22. Is there a question uh, along with that, Rose, or you just shared the reference? No, I, I don't know, Pastor, if that relates to Mangi's question. It just reads that, I'll just read it out, Pastor. But mm. I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. So that's mm. Revelation 21, 22. Yeah, but I guess sure. that's in heaven. <laughs> uh i think this you're talking about the new jerusalem right yes yeah so the new jerusalem uh i don't think that's heaven because uh my understanding is that we'll have the millennial temple here on the earth right and then you know god says that he's going to create the new heavens and the new earth does that relate to Mangi's question, Pastor? Revelation 21-22? Uh, it does relate. Uh, Mangi was more specific about the millennium. So that is why I said in the millennium, there will be a temple. But yeah, after that, I think God himself will... will. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, you don't need a temple. So he is worshipped anyway, right? So that's the point. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, some someone raised your hand, but we've kind of run out of time. I'm one. Oh, 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 Pastor, it's just me. I, I, I just oh, yes, yes, say. Yeah, yes, I just say. wanted to hint on. I just wanted to hint on what you said about pattern. That mm -hmm. what whatever we see in heaven, mm -hmm. the end goal is to see a replica of what is in heaven here mm -hmm. on earth. When the mm -hmm. Lord talks about a new earth and a new heaven. In other words, it's going to be what we're seeing, what we know from scriptures on how the, the angels, people worship, we're going to see a replica of that on earth. Mm. And again, I just one more point again is that right now we're only spiritually joined with Christ. But in that mm. time, both spirit, soul, and body, we would see him. We would now see him in our physical body in our glorious physical body so that's the difference why we need to have that mm. kind of stuff. but it's more on pattern on what we see in heaven to be reflected here on earth like that 
just to add that to what you said. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Say. That's, uh, you know, quite thought provoking. So physically, we'll, we'll see him, right? So that's good. Um, I think we will stop here. Uh, if we have more questions, let's take it up in the next class because you, know, you have another class to attend. Uh, we'll uh, pray and close right now. Uh, a- anyone else who raised your hands, you know, please do come back with the questions next week uh, and we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, so, Mangi, would you like to pray, please? And we, we close for today. Okay, that's all. Uh... Um, okay. Anyone else? Can I pray? Ah, yes, please. Go ahead. Our precious Father, we thank you, praise you, honor you for this wonderful evening. Sorry, wonderful, wonderful morning. Lord Master, we bless your holy name and we thanking you and praising you, Father God, for your, for your divine word, Father God, for the unchanging word. Lord, we pray that, Father, give us grace to grasp that 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 glory which is in your word god master lord master we pray that let that word transform us so that we can walk in the holiness and in purity the lord master that word lord master penetrate our joints and the marrows and father god our thoughts and father god our soul and father god let it let it let it change us let it change us oh god let it change let our faith become unshaking lord master in every circumstances let that word bring faith oh lord master when we face the mountains and challenges in our life for god let we not lord master let it not be shaken by the power of your word let we always believe that father lord you are not a human lord master you said i will not lie i pray the glory of that word which we heard today oh god let it lord deeply rooted in us and strengthen us and father God, by the power of that word, let me able to crush the powers of the darkness and Lord Master reign, O Lord Master, for your kingdom. Thank you once again, Father God, for strengthening your servant, O Lord Master, and Lord Master, using her tongue to Lord Master, release your revelation. Thank you for preparing each one of her heart, O God. Thank you for using her. And Father, use her mightily. All the glory, honor, and praises belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Man, thank you. Thank you, Shri, Shri Kumar. And thank you, everyone. God bless you. Thank you uh, yeah, thank you. God bless. Have a beautiful day. We'll connect next week. Yeah, take care. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Avni. Bye.